Hello folks and welcome to Dubious Engineering. Today, the Panasonic TV. Let's get this 55-inch behemoth of a TV apart, try not to break it, and see if we can figure out what the problem is. So I don't have a workbench big enough for this. I'm doing it on our bed. One of these things is really handy. An electric screwdriver, because you can literally run around the telly and get all the screws out really quickly. You want to get all of the screws out of the telly actually. So all the way around the outside and also these others that are kicking around in various different random locations. Once you've removed all the screws, you should then carefully be able to start popping the back cover off. And it should just come off in one piece, like that. So there it is in all its glory. Let's have a quick look and see what we've got inside here. We've got speakers here, which are mounted on little rubber doodads, which stops them from vibrating and making awful noises. We've got here a Wi-Fi card, which is a little USB Wi-Fi card. You can unplug that. And the first thing probably to do really is to try unplugging everything, reseating all of the connectors, that are on the PCBs here. This is the power and control PCB. And uh, there we go. Just reseat all of those connectors, anything that you can get your hands on. And then over here we have the computer. Uh, so this is basically the tuner and the computer, the Android computer that does all of the smart TV stuff. Now at the bottom here, we have the display driver. Um, so LEDs, the LEDs, the back, the backlights in the TV are driven by these two cables here. So these come into the back of the telly here to drive the LEDs. And then this PCB under this piece of metal work here is the PCB that drives the actual LCD display itself. And again, that's driven by the main computer. So first thing to test is the power supply. Let's see if we're getting the appropriate voltages to drive all of the LEDs. Let's get a multimeter and check this PCB here and make sure it's doing what it says on the tin. Okay folks, so best way to do this then, here is a little meter that hopefully you can see the readings on. And what I'm gonna do, we're gonna operate on a live PCB. So I've got a figure of eight cable here, gonna plug it in. You gotta be pretty quick about this. I'm just gonna check the voltage on the first set, 65 volts, and the voltage on the second set of LEDs, 66 volts. That's all looking good. And the other thing to check here is the five volt line, so that you know the power supply is dumping out five volts to the computer. So that's all working. Uh, the thing about this, when the computer realizes that there's a problem, um, it sends a signal back to the power supply and the power supply ultimately shuts down. So if we test it again now, we'll see that we've got like one volt coming out of here and one volt coming out of here for the LED drivers. So anyway, um, that is actually working. Uh, it looks as though the power supply is doing what it says on the tin, but the computer's telling the power supply to shut down because the computer's not working. Well, certainly the logic um, in the computer is telling the power supply to shut down. One other voltage that we need to check on this PCB, I'm just going to unplug the PCB here. Again, really please be careful because you're dealing with live equipment, 240 volts. So we'll just plug that in and we'll see the meter here. I'm just going to have a quick look at this 16 volt line and we can see that we've also got 16 volts there as well. And then after a few seconds, what will happen is the computer will the logic in the computer PCB will tell the power supply to shut itself down. So the power supply is doing what it says on the tin. So a day or two have gone by and I managed to purchase myself some spare boards from an old set on eBay. And much to my dismay, I have exactly the same problem when I've changed out all of those boards, not all at the same time, I changed out the processor first, I then changed out the power supply, and I then changed out the uh, LVDS driver for the uh, LCD display. And sadly, we've got the same problem with the flashing red light. So it sounds like it's an LED. The LEDs are buried deep inside here. We have to take off very carefully the LCD. 
we have to take off multiple layers of plastic sheeting that um, diffuse the white light from the LEDs. Uh, and then we have to identify, we have to sort of connect everything back up and identify which LED it is. This, this is becoming a real pain. <laughs> but we're going to keep working at it. And uh, you never know, we might end up with a working TV set. So now we have to remove all the screws from around the bezel. Uh, so the electric screwdriver really comes into its own here. There you go. Screw out. Happy days. Let's uh, let's keep going. Ah, oh, loads of these to do. Fold it over on its back now. Okay, easy. Go easy. Well, there we go. There's all the LEDs. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we've managed to break the bezel, which is a real shame. But uh, that's not insurmountable. I don't know if we've broken the screen. I've got to be honest, that is. We don't have the room for it. I mean, this is a double bed. Um, the likelihood of this actually surviving uh, a repair. Yeah, I think we're going to have to buy a new one. <laughs> Having just uh, seen the LEDs flash again, it looks like this set of LEDs work and this set of LEDs don't. So it might be one LED that's gone short and killed off that area there. So I just found, as I was tugging away on the backlight reflector, it, obviously it wasn't going to come off. And the primary reason behind that was because these little plastic clips hold it in. And in order to get these plastic clips out, my wife can just hold the camera for a second, that's perfect. What you've got to do is you've got to, there you go, pop them backwards like that. When they pop up, you can see these two little lugs that connect into these holes. So we've got to run round and get rid of all of these little plastic holders. There we go, another one. I'm using a power tool battery to check the LED strips and I've disconnected all of the LED strips manually so each LED strip is now disconnected and I'm testing them all so let me show you what happens when I test them okay so with the power tool <laughs> with the 20 volt power tool supply here what about you ah there we go so <laughs> We can see from this, sorry, it's not a great connection. That's why they're flickering a little bit there. But we can see from this that with a power tool battery, so 20 volts connected to the terminals of the LED strip, you can establish which strips of LEDs are working. <laughs> and clearly we have an LED strip down. Yeah, so that one's working. That one's working. That LED strip is not working. Oi! <laughs> that was me by accident touching my probes together. And this LED strip is not working. So we've got two LED strips that are down here and here. Right, the question now is do we buy two LED strips, find somewhere, reassemble the whole TV, find somewhere to store it, buy two LED strips, or do we just go down a shop and buy another TV? Well, the good news is we've established what the problem was. It's these LED strips. I've got to be honest. Um, I don't think I'm going to be able to put this TV back together easily without breaking the LCD screen. Well, folks, I've got to be honest. The amount of effort versus the 300 quid it's going to cost me for a new TV. Obviously, it's not going to be a Panasonic and it's not going to be quite as nice as this. But it's just a real shame that, you know, this Panasonic is probably, what, four years old. And I swear they've got... I don't want to get all um, conspiracy theorists on you at the moment. <laughs> well, clearly the longevity of the LEDs that live inside these things isn't particularly good. So, sadly, um, I think this telly's fit for the bin. I know a lot of you are probably going to say, No, Howie, buy some LED strips, reassemble the telly and, you know, and you'll be good and all the rest of it. Oh, I really can't be bothered. And I genuinely believe when we try and put this back together, 
uh, I genuinely believe I'm going to crack the um, the LCD uh, on the front of it. Just down to the fact that I, I don't have the space or the equipment to be able to do this. With a telly that's the size of a double bed, it's just almost impossible to do this yourself with the right equipment, the right space. Uh, but yeah, we, you know, we made some good progress here. It's been a learning experience, let's put it that way. Things you gotta do to get a new TV. What do you mean? <laughs> Oh, look at the hair! Oh my goodness! <laughs> Cute one. <laughs> so, having cut, coloured, washed and blow-dried my wife's hair, I now have permission... Well, well I bought a new TV. 320 quid, Toshiba. Um, UHD with all the smart features, uh, very similar to the last one, 55 inches. Stuffing it up on the wall here. It's going to show a little trick. So here's the deal. When you are going to drill holes in your wall, if you sellotape an old envelope to the wall and you don't drill too fast, the envelope will collect all the dust for you. week and weekend. We'll see you in the next one. Cheers and beers folks. Bye for now.